Arthur, thank you for joining me. And we'll be back, obviously, with Super Saturday's game soon. See you later. Welcome back. Welcome back. It's the Seagulls taking on the Bulldogs at 3 p.m. on Saturday. It is at Four Pines Park. Baxter, thank you for joining me once again. And as we are recording this, the Storm have gone over the line. So it is now 6-4 with a kick to come. So we will see how that one finishes up. But let's jump into the reason we are here. Tommy Turbo, he is back. Trebojevic at the back. Christian Tupalutu, Brad Parker. Tulatai Kula, Ruben Garrick, Cooper Johns gets the number six, obviously with Schuster injured, DCE, Tanela Paseka, Lachlan Croker, Drake Trebojevic, Hamuole Alakaku, Kelma Talagi, Sean Kepi, KO Weeks, Ben Trebojevic, Ethan Bullimore, Josh Alafoy, and Tofalo Sipley. It's a strong side. We saw what they did, obviously, during that preseason challenge, how much do you read into it? They dominated the Roosters. They did have that bad 15 minutes. So it's a bit hard to read into this. What we saw was they can score points, they can leak points. So talk to me about this lineup. What do you think? Obviously, the major, major talking points is Tom Trevojevic did pass the fitness test. He is into this side. Josh Schuster is out. Cooper Johns, who I thought was probably one of their best players during that preseason, does get the starting position. And obviously, Brad Parker is good to go, obviously, despite suffering a broken nose against the Roosters. So they look like they're ready to go. They've won a preseason challenge. They've got that extra money. What do you make of this side in this game, this lineup? Yeah, it looks, looks very good on paper. Um, Tommy T, let's see how his um, ex- extended hamstrings look. Maybe the, uh, those new stretching routines will help him long term um yeah good to see that cooper johns in the six i'll just jump in there quickly i'll jump in there quickly obviously i don't know if you've heard this but for the listeners at home when they sent tom trebojevic over to america it actually wasn't to do with any of the explosiveness so that's why they decided not to move him into the center it was the way he was running so when he steps i can't remember if it's his left foot or his right foot it kind of goes in and that's what's causing the hamstring to go so obviously a little bit different to what latrell mitchell went through but yeah. If they can correct his running style, he could be in for a very big season. But go on. Uh, it's a lot of things with Tommy. Just his tall statue, lower back problems. It always leads to leg problems, especially in your calves and your hamstrings area. So, look, hopefully they got the stretching technique right out so they can help him out long term. Um, it'll be good. Like, I did miss him in the Australian um, squad in the World Cup because I think he would have done greatness for us there. Um, back again, Cooper Johns, yeah, he had a great preseason. Um, rightly deserved this six jersey with Schuster going down. I've had my I say on Schuster, I don't think he's a six. He's a forward man, which then pushes Jake into 10, which I think is a bit it's a bit worrying for me because I like Jakey as a 13, as this running role sort of thing, side to side. He's not he, Now he's, on a t- he's in the forward pack on the left-hand side. He's sort of stuck to that one side. He can't sort of shift side to side like a 13, like he normally would. You see Isaiah Yo, um, Cameron Murray, um, Victor Bradley, uh, Jason Tomalolo, lo- those style of 13s. And so is Jake. They just shift side to side and they got these beautiful hands um, to go along with it with the football. Um, so it'll be interesting to see that. I know he does play a front row for the New South Wales um, rep team, but that's a different kettle of fish. Um, the bench looks good. It looks stacked. It's just ready to rip in, but don't be surprised if Manly changed their 18 number jersey to number 22, uh, 21 Morgan Harbour or number 19 Ben Gordon. Um, it may be a little bit of shift around the news out of Manly that I'm hearing that they may do that. They may not. Um, it's always good to keep the opposition uh, guessing, and especially being at home, um, you know, it's going to be feeling good for them. Yeah, obviously, it, it's a cracking game. Obviously, I don't know if you've changed your prediction when it did come to the Raiders, but this is the side that I kind of have in my top eight that a lot of people have sitting just outside. So, 
We'll see if you exchange your Raiders tip. But for me, I think this team can finish inside the top eight. They've got the players there. If they can stay fit, if they can get Saab back, well, we'll see what happens. But let's move on. They're against an opponent who has obviously a new coach, has a lot of new players. It's the yeah. Canterbury Bulldogs. Talk to me about it. The fullback role, they've got Hayes, Perham in the in the wing spot. You've got Jacob Karaz and Josh Adekar, the fox, the electrifying man out on the wing. You've got Jake uh, Avarilla and Paul Amarotti in the centres. You've got Matt Burton and Kyle Flanagan in the halves. Matt King and Ryan Sutton in the forward pack with Reed Mahoney back at the uh, Canterbury Bankstown Bulldogs in the, in the hooker role. You've got Vimeo Kickout and Raymond FM in the second row position with F Brown in the, uh, in the lock position. I'm not going to pronounce that. I'm sorry. You've got Jaden Tanner, Corey Waddell, Frank, Franklin Pele, Jacob Preston, and Braden Burns to wrap up your interchange bench positions. But, again, I'm always hearing a different little news here and there. Don't be surprised if that 18 jersey, jersey changes to a 20 and the return of... Bulldogs legend Josh Reynolds makes an appearance on this bench lineup. So I'm really excited for this one. Um, I think this is going to be, I'm calling it my game of the round. Um, it could go either way. You could see Tommy have this amazing game back and show him everybody what these hamstrings can do, or he comes back and it's all over Red Rover for him. Or Bulldogs come out there and, just tear mainly a new one and show them what 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 this um Gus Gould plan to put this side together um can do. Uh, I've got it really tight, really really tight. I got it one to four when I lean with the home side mainly. Unfortunately for the dog fans, um, I see this is as I said, it's my game of the round. It's Super Saturday, three p.m. I'm going to put my feet up. I'm going to grab a four points park. Uh, four points at Four Points Park and just watch this game unfold. Well, obviously, I think you're absolutely crazy because I don't think this is going to be as close as what everyone thinks. I think Manly will run away with this game. But obviously, we're talking about the Bulldogs first. So Luke Thompson obviously has injured his ankle. They're tossing up at the moment if he does need surgery. If he doesn't, he could see him again this year. If he does, his season will be all but over. So obviously, like you said, FB does take his spot in that lock position. Now, big in for the Bulldogs. It is obviously Serrata who does take the realms. How much control he'll have when you do have Gus Guild, who knows? And that's always going to be the talking point. I, I, think you you'll have, I think you'll have complete control. I think the difference between previous Bulldogs coaches with under Gus or previous coaches elsewhere is other coaches were afraid sort of thing to go to Gus Gordon and ask for, uh, ask for advice or help or whatnot. Or I think Serrato is sort of the opposite. I think he will, if he if he feels like he, he needs a sort of a second opinion or an, an expert opinion from a man who's been there, done that at different levels of, the, of this game, I think he's not afraid to just go to Gus and go, what do you think about this, this, this? This is what I'm thinking. And he might come back with, oh, yeah, do a bit of A, B, and maybe do a bit of X. Um, so... I think he's got full control over that squad, but my um, my big concern, it's not like I, I wish he does well. Um, it's Kyle Flanagan. I wish he does well because, I, man, I think this is a player who's purely, purely like designed for that seven role, but he just hasn't been given the chances at the Dogs so far. Um, and then when it has been his chances, they're just not re really um, helped him out nor like, you know, they've always let him down. So hopefully he does well and he can continue keeping that seven spot for the Bulldogs. Yeah, I mean, I've got no, no, I guess. Hard feelings. Disagreement with that. No, no disagreement that I think that obviously he will go to Gus and he will obviously ask for a second advice. But I think there's already been a report leaked that he went when he wanted to put Josh Reynolds in the top 30. And he asked Gus Gould for permission. Now, if I'm the head coach, I'm picking the lineup, not you. I don't care who you are. I'm the head coach. I'm picking my top 30. I shouldn't have to ask you for permission if I think he is a top 30 player. Oh, so we, that's kind of that's that's kind of my the, thought process. Because yeah, go for it, go for it. On the back of it, no, it was more so that they had Serrato picked his. I think it was like 26 or 27 players. 
and there was three spots open for I believe it was five different people. And just what Josh has brought to the club off the park and on the park with training sessions and all that, I think that's what Serato was sort of going to gust about. Like, is this bloke football ready? Maybe not. Like, he's not NRL football ready. Like, you know, you go away and play overseas, you know, the game gets away from you. But what he brought to the squad work is culture, which is what Bulldogs, what the Canterbury Bulldogs want to get back to, which is that Bulldog football. He is Bulldogs through and through. He's blue and white. Um, I think he bleeds blue and white every day of the week. So I think it was more, not so can he come. I think it was more so this is where I want to go with. Do you do you think do you agree or disagree? Well, I mean, I mean Gus and- came out. In, Gus came out himself and already said that he asked for permission. That was the exact wording. Can I put Josh Reynolds in the top thirty? That was the exact thing that Gus Guild has. From said what I heard, Gus so, Gus's response was, "Yeah, go tell him straight away. Just tell him straight away." Yeah, but to ask for permission, he's asked for permission. If, if I want him in the lineup, do you reckon Trent Robinson's going to go ask some advisor on the Roosters board who he can put in, or Craig Bellamy is going to go? Listen, I think Munster might be at 75%. Do you reckon I'm going to... No, he's going to put who he wants in that lineup. So, like I said, we will leave that there because we are pushing. But if he does not have full control of this team, it is not going to be a successful team. And, again, it's going to take six or 12 months for this team to gel. You've got, obviously, Reid Mahoney in there. You've got kick-out that's come in there. There's new players. You've got Franklin Pele who's going to burst onto the scene. But if they don't have a full control of this side, if Serrato can't make these decisions without having to go... Gus, can I put him on the field? I think they're going to struggle. So we'll see how that one goes. You've gone manly one to four. I've gone manly 13 plus. I think the Bulldogs are going to take five to six games before they do click into gear. And I'm all in agreement that I think Josh Reynolds will come into this side after round five or six, and he will start to steady the ship, and they'll kind of flip between him and Flanagan. So we're both in agreement that obviously – Manly are going to win. You said one to four. I'm going to give you one to 12 purely because of that bracket, and I'll take 13 plus. But Blackstar, again, thank you for joining me. And obviously, we'll be back very soon to discuss your boys, the Cowboys, taking on the Raiders at Queensland Country Bank Stadium. You, you. I'll cut this after. Para just scored, by the way. Oh, fuck. I'm just saying hi. Hi, bro. What do you want? Hello. What are you doing? I'm um, watching TikTok. How would you watch TikTok? She's what's watching footy? your prediction go incorrect. What's your prediction? He had, he had Storm to I did too. You tip Storm anyway, Racina. I tipped him, but it's about on here. So if I win, <laughs> I win. No. Is your son asleep? No. No, we don't have that much time. We still got to record oh, like four games. Bye. bye. All right. Are you ready? Yeah, let's keep kicking to it. Three, two, one.